You're listening to Off The Stage with your hosts, James Berry and Connor Michael, where we take musicians off the stage and into the pub to talk about the ins and outs of the music world. Good evening. Welcome back to the pub. This is Off The Stage with me, James Berry and Connor Michael. He's making Instagram boomerangs. He's making an Instagram. <laughs> For those watching, he's making an Instagram thing. We've got our pints. We've got our guests. Let's get on with the show. Hi. Hello. Welcome. How's it going? Not too bad. Not too bad. Welcome to Not Too Bad. Yes. Cool. Um, we have a slight change in guests. We do. Uh, we were meant to have a, a band. Were we going to get the band or were we just going to get the front man? I think it was, might have been the, just the front man. Uh, we were going to have, uh, is it Basola? Is that pronounced Basola. right? Basola. And we will get them back on at some point. Um, but they had to cancel on a medical ground this morning. Uh, so thankfully, we've got the fantastic Chris Norris. Good evening. Chat today. I'll have to do. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> perfectly fine. Um, yeah, so you say you, you start listening to the podcast obviously this morning. Uh, Stevie's came out, didn't it? Yes, yes it was this morning, yeah. yeah. Well, it would have came out last two weeks ago. Yeah, for the listeners. <laughs> we do time travel here, you see. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, how, how do you rate the concept of the podcast? I think it's what you're doing is fantastic. Obviously, yeah. being a huge Connor Michael fan, yes. you know, myself. <laughs> uh, We've done yeah. a few gigs together, haven't we? Yeah, uh, we have. We've done <laughs> two, I think. Festivals. Still, yeah. And, yeah. Festivals. I, I tend to follow them around. You know, <laughs> yeah, vice versa. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think what you're doing is fantastic. The whole idea of the podcast get the um, get the original local music out there and you know, see how many stars you can build. Well, yeah. that is the plan. Um, but not just the podcast; it's pub. We are back at the Ship Isis. We've been here last two weeks. Yeah. We did take a little pit stop off at the Blue Bell for Scott's episode. Yes, we did. Um, but we're back, and what are we drinking? Well, um, this monstrosity here it's a green beer i've not i haven't t- tried it yet i like to do like a, a ghost okay. tasting I, I can't remember what it's called it's called um i think it's like kickstarter night wish i'll go back downstairs and i'll, I'll check what it's <laughs> called and i'll get back to you but it's this, we uh, the drinks five minutes ago i know i know <laughs> it just it had like it had a skeleton guy on the on the front with like a with a with a helmet on and it looked flipping mint so i was like i'll get this turn out to be like green as fuck so uh <laughs> so this is like Oh, bloody hell. Said it was a sour. Is yeah, it sour? very much it sour. sour. Oh, I'm going to try it. Sour. Tastes, I'm not spill anything on you. <laughs> I tell it, it tastes like, you know, those um, weird toxic sweets you used to get? Like the toxic. Oh, that's really nice. Let's yeah. have a go. Like, you know, the, 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 on, the, Ooh, on those like toxic um, yellow <laughs> barrel <laughs> things. <laughs> It's like a pineapple sour. Toxic, toxic you know what? waste. That's this is a era. toxic waste. Uh, this yeah. is a heartburn waiting. I tried my first toxic waste ever about two weeks ago. The right. daughter brought a pack home. How'd you do? Oh. She was fantastic. She was banging them back like there was no, no the matter. <laughs> so I spot mine out. She yeah. had like little bonbons and you're there. There must be different <laughs> levels of sourness because <laughs> there's no way a human could eat the one that I ate. Yeah. yeah. It ended up across the room. I was laughed at. I don't know if you get like uh, less... Cause I used to like, I was the same. Like I used to love those kind of sour sweets. But I don't know if your your taste buds get a little bit um, like matured a little bit more yeah. for the older you get. Because I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Well, saying that I'm drinking this bad boy, but mm-hmm. <laughs> I was it's really as refreshing that. As well. Yeah, it's it's quite a nice. It, you know, the fine line between like sweety soury beer and sweety soury cider. Yeah, like I wouldn't be able. Uh, What's if, the percentage? Oh, I should have checked that, shouldn't I? We don't check anymore. Right, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to find the name. I'm going to check the percentage. I just saw, I say, I just saw the, this the skeleton guy with a helmet. I'm really fickle when it comes to choosing beers. I, I pick what, what picture I like the best. Yeah. yeah. The, um, the, I tell you that one of the best best pubs, I mean, obviously the Isis is the, the best pub. The but the other, other pub in Sunderland um, is the Ivy House. Mm-hmm. And they used to have um, cool little, the, like, worky tickets. It was like it's like a quite a popular. Um, I'm sure it was Maxima does it, something like that. But they changed it to Wookie ticket, and they put Chewbacca on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I just bought one because it's like you know. Wookie yeah, the the, the, lo- the local up my way got um, Juice Springsteen in. Ah, nice. Huge. Juice tell you what, yeah. I had I had that in Sheffield. Juice Springsteen. Yeah. It's Brew York. Do that one. They got it yeah. on tap, so it's lovely out of can. But they got I was never out the place. Ah, you know, it, was, it was ridiculous. Ah, it's lovely. But I top beer Juice Springsteen. It was um, they had a 
rhubarbless dry sand as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, I can't think of the top of my head, but any listeners and viewers, comment to anything that you've got kind of like music related beer puns. I think that'll be a cool little uh, challenge to do. They also mm-hmm. had a, a juice foresight. I didn't try that one. <laughs> Well, I didn't get anything like that. I'm, I'm back to the milk stouts. Milk stouts. Well, that's so, classic. Uh, they were saying downstairs there's going to be like a, a takeover. So they're kind of just emptying all the barrels and not changing anything. Um, so there's quite a limited selection downstairs. We kind of walked in, there's only yeah. about, what, 20 beers on? And there's like about 12, 13. And I'm trying to pick out. So we got you a, a mystery IPA. Yeah, I ordered myself a mystery beer. And uh, this is what arrived. Yeah, it was the only IPA left, I think. It the was rest like, were it was all like um, uh, ales and, and stuff like that. If I knew they had toxic waste on tap, I would have... Yeah, well, I would have definitely that, not yeah. ordered a toxic <laughs> waste. <laughs> but yeah, um, how was your, your IPA? Lovely, very nice. Oh, very, it um, so it's mild, yeah. it's a bit fizz to it. It's yeah. not, not a bad drop, I've had oh, worse. Cool. Yeah. What's it called? Kirk's. That's Kirk's still... It doesn't, the, the picture didn't look very flattering, if I'm honest. It, it, like, I know it's, it's, that'll do. It, it looked more like, a, you know, the, the typical, like, Green King IBAs. It, yeah. looked, like, it looked like that on the, the tap. It was nothing like punching, like, out in your face. It's probably the, why it's the only one left. Should have got a pint. Terrible, <laughs> terrible decision. You know, it's that. Yeah, well, we all it's, make it's a trial. Like, yeah, look, there's, there's four parts. You can get a pint later. <laughs> um, how was your weekend at gigs? Were you gigging at all? Did you do... Where was I? I, I was down in... I was rehearsing with a band on Sunday. Right. And the night before that, I was gigging. And I can't even remember where I was. I love that. I was gig. down <laughs> in... Um, Pres- King's Bar in South Shields. King's oh, the Prosecco Ki- yes. Lounge. Uh, King's Prosecco Lounge. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice one. It was. Okay. It was very... Not what I expected. Yeah. Walked in. It was a well done out area for, for a performer to play. Mm. Decent sized crowd. Um, True, lovely food. smelling Indian food from the restaurant yes. next door. It's Namaste, you know? isn't it? Yeah, I, I took out a carry out to take home, obviously. Yeah, yeah well, you can't. Like, the thing is, that's uh, the, uh, it's. Um, it's gigging, do you ever get this when you could get points? Do you ever get like the smell of like takeaway food sometimes? Uh, when I'm finished. Last time I played there. So, I, so you leave and then it's just big market whiff. Now, this was like, it was there constantly when I was playing. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't even hungry when I went in. I had to get like a, a full on kebab wrap when I, when I got the, out because just yeah. the smell just constantly just makes you more well, and more hungry. Yeah, that, that was it. I, I had a carvery before I went, so I, I couldn't have been more full yeah. before I got to the venue. By half time, I've never been so hungry. Just the whiff of Indian food. The yeah. worst I ever found well, that was the stack. He played the stack, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Times, oh, yeah. you had the food venues yeah. Yeah. all around and it was just. Looked amazing. It was lush when they yeah. you got a half hour break. Right, I'm going to quickly mm. run to that one, that one, yeah. that one. It's quality. Yeah, pre-ordered on your phone. It's quality. It's like, and the stage is mint and all. And yeah, I played the Newcastle one more than the um, the Seabin one, but I, the Seabin one was bigger, wasn't it? Or still is. Uh-huh. It's still there, yeah. that one. Yes. And I had the bigger stage. But food eateries, both top notch. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I... Uh, I, I, I was going to say the ISIS pub do a uh, chicken on a Tuesday. I thought I, I was feeling the need to advertise, you know. <laughs> we never uh, took advantage of that. No, every time we go downstairs, it's, it's all done. It's, oh. <laughs> right, next episode, we'll, uh, we'll get ourselves. When we do the, the drinking episode, oh, yeah. we'll have a, a drink and we'll wings. have a feast. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll get some chicken wings. Oh, we owe them. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we do Big that. time. Yeah. I, uh, I was gigging in the Midlands over the weekend, and uh, the bar I was playing on Sunday, so I did a gig in a bar called Red by Night, which is in Dudley. Mm-hmm. And then I finished out at five, then I was meant to be on a filthies at ten, so I had five hours to drive back to South Shields, drop the missus and the kids off, then shoot up to Scott. And then halfway up, Scott ran, so we're on at half twelve instead. <laughs> I'm getting a nap in now. Um, but right next to the venue and I play outside, right next to that is an Indian's at a weather spoon, so mm-hmm. you just get down wind of all the foods coming through, you're like I'm getting a bit hungry now. Yeah. Do deliberately, you know, I'm sure I'm sure they've got like a like a like a, a shaft. Fan. Yeah, it's like a fan that goes outside. Mm. Like um, I'm sure they do deliberately just to whack the smell, just to entice you in. Yeah, like especially with a five-hour drive home, you're gonna have uh, to fill up, aren't you? Oh, come on. I think we. Oh, we don't think we stopped for food. Well, I think we ate beforehand. Went to a, an all-you-can-eat Asian buffet. Oh, I love that. In a, in a place mm-hmm. called Merry Hill, which is like a small version of Metro Center. And it was like the Indian food wasn't amazing. Like, I picked up. That's the thing with all your needs, though. It's it like, you, like yeah, you both the quantity Chinese over food, quality. Absolutely, yeah, incredible. Yeah, I, I, couldn't couldn't fault the Chinese food. I could devour all you can eat Chinese buffets. And sweet chili like, chicken meatballs oh, were yeah. like what to die for. Yeah. Um, Speaking of my Midlands gig, I'm going to give a big shout out to uh, Castle Bromwich Cricket Club 
every time I go down there, they're like, yeah, we'll put you on. And the crowd is, am- I can't stress the crowd itself. Yeah. Even when it's not busy like it wasn't on, I think I played there Saturday night, um, there, there must have been like what, 30, 40 people in, so it wasn't a big full room, but it has such a Wembley atmosphere. It's mm. it's unbelievable gig, and I how, can't wait to go there in November. How's Red by Night? I've supported them before. I've played there. Red by Night's good. Um, the Sunday, the first time I played the Sundays, the Sunday was a bit quieter, but it was a weird one, because obviously it was a bank holiday weekend, and nobody knew it was a bank holiday weekend. It's mm. like... Yeah. Um, I've done many a Saturday gig there, which has been fantastic. And they do Thursday original nights, um, which I've done one before, and it was a bit, a bit dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think they're starting to bring more local original acts in, and they say the Thursdays are slowly starting to build up. Mm-hmm. So they're like, look, the next time I'm down, if, if I'm allowed to, because obviously I'm from northeast but i do have midlands connections so there'll people that'll turn up for that yeah that's what i spoke to them about their um, thursday original night and mm. i just thought it's a long way to go i thought it was the risk that it was going to yeah. be quiet you know <laughs> i'll travel far afield to do an original gig um maggie mears i went down there yes, I played I there, there as well it did you go there you know what i went because we went to chef it wasn't even over the weekend it was like a Thurs- well, Wednesday and a Thursday. Wednesday's the original night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's that's why I went down. I was yeah, like, I've got oh, my buskers up here once I went down to Sheffield. Aye, and did it. it was closed. Oh, really? Aye, I don't know. I looked on the, the website, seemed everything was, was normal. Yeah. I mean, they didn't really advertise anyone. Mm. Oh, no, they did. I'm sure they advertised someone. And it just wasn't it wasn't open. I don't it was It was a brilliant venue. I mean, I, I yeah. spent the whole night, because obviously you can see yourself on the screen, the broadcast, you're yeah, on the bar. So I just uncomfortably stared at myself singing on the screen for the whole night. I did that, but not yeah. uncomfortably. I was just admiring it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, do, you want your, do you want a poster? I was like, yes, I've got a big, like, uh, A1 poster of <laughs> myself in the garage. Yeah. Just like, yeah. <laughs> cool, like. Yeah. I was just really disappointed. I mean, I wasn't going there to play. I just wanted to, to go and see some music because oh, I was, yeah. I was out of life, you know. Big quiz on Wednesday. I wonder if they stopped doing the original scene. They did. They did. When did they stop that? And I can't even remember how I know. I, there was a post put on, I think, a few months back. I think mm. the uh, the lady that was doing it, I don't know if she stopped working. Lovely. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. But there was definitely a post that they were ending the Wednesday music nights. Oh, I was good with that because Wednesday, it was, it, to be fair, it wasn't busy when I went down there. We could have done a double header. Could have, again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was it was good. I'd, I'd look forward to that gig for ages because I remember I contacted them uh, pre COVID. They're like, oh, yeah, if you get in touch with us, when the next lockdown ends, the next one, it, it, yeah. it happened. And then they're right. Yeah, we're putting it on if we book in for next year, which was, I believe it was January this year. I finally did the gig. Um, but it was really good. Uh, good different thing just to go down to Sheffield and do a gig on, on a weekday. Uh, where, where did you park? I had one of the scariest moments in my life down there. Uh, I was in the multi-story. I was on our multi-story, but it was a premiere in multi-story, I think. No, I was in the multi-story just down the road. Mm. And I didn't realise down there you have to take your ticket with you. Mm. Oh, it's oh, Q so, Park. Yeah, it's a Q so Park. I'm yep, in Sheffield, the same. Yeah. like 11 o'clock at night. They were starting to shut the bar, so no nobody around yeah. there. And I had to drive home um, that night, so I had my kit, my PA, my guitar, everything, in the middle of this back street in Sheffield, and discovered that I couldn't get in. Mm. And the I, panic. It's a, it's, a oh. weird, it's a weird place. And all my in? God. Um, well, I cried for about half an hour. <laughs> yeah, as you do. And then, luckily, a drunken couple who just all had a pizza, well, stumbling past. Um, so I'd been at the main entrance. I just happened to wander to the side entrance, and lo and behold, there they were trying to let themselves in with the tickets. So I had to follow them in, thank them, hug them. You know, you <laughs> saved my life. And wow. uh, got myself out. Yeah, close call. I had a night on the streets in Sheffield. Yeah, I, d- yeah. I, made, I made that mistake. Um, luckily, I, like, because I was stopping for a few days, so I pre-booked. So I had a... I had a physical ticket and I also had a scan thing on my phone. Luckily, the scan pre-book worked. And I was like, thank <laughs> fuck for that. Although, apparently, well, apparently I don't understand um, what the parking bays are because I parked mm-hmm. at night and there was no other cars around. So I was like, oh, it's, it's fine. Yeah. So I got like a, a naughty letter on me um, oh. car and I got mm-hmm. £100 fine. I was like, oh, I've just spent 140 quid. <laughs> I was like so angry. We were, spo- we were supposed to like, um, like Kat was trying to, yeah, it's my wife Kat, trying to cheer us up. It's like, oh, don't don't worry, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll transfer you some. Like, don't transfer us money. Like she did in the end, but I've, I've give it back now. Because yeah. um, we're supposed to go to the Peak District and have like a nice walk around and mm-hmm. chill out. But I was just not in the mood. I was mm-hmm. so, so grumpy. Um, then I reread the thing that was like, 
this is a warning. Next time you do this, I was oh, like, oh I yes, yeah. One. I was like, that's fair because I was like, I'm never going to Sheffield again because I was chucked out by a bouncer in the other the other night yeah. for no reason. Yeah, no well, reason at all. all say that. We, we all need to avoid Sheffield, I think. That's yeah. what I'm away from this. I've got no problem with it. I'm, I'm, I want to go back and play the green room. Um, I, I was meant to do that on my, the Change EP tour, and then uh, somebody ate a bat, and then we all got housebound for uh, 24 months or something. It happens, you know. Um, yeah. That time I'm uh, getting locked in the Durham car park story in the podcast, yeah. No, I don't think you've ever told us that. Yeah, it was only like the other week. Oh. I was doing a gig at the Free Bridges. And uh, there's a, I think, it's, is it the waterfront? You know Durham more than I do. Um, Watergate or, or something that, like that. It's a car park. Um, is it, do you go across the bridge? And it's like... Yes. Is that next to the Odeon? Yeah, next to the yeah, Odeon. Well, I was parked in there. And uh, what they do, they give you a ticket. Uh, obviously, you go through the barrier, because you your ticket, you go up. And uh, I did the gig, so I had to carry the guitar, everything, walked across. It was starting to rain. Got to the venue, uh, played my set, it was good. Fi- finished when the venue was closing, so I like, walked back to the car. Um, got back to the car park, everything in the car, I was fine. Um, couldn't find my ticket. <laughs> Panic and now, and I'm trying to search. It's not one of them, like, I can sc- type me registration number and everything. Yeah. I've got to physically use a ticket to get out. Got an haven't I spent the next half an hour looking around the entire car park, and I must have dropped it in here somewhere near the car, it's not under the car. I try to ring the help desk on the the little uh, pay yep. little thing. Yeah. You press the help button, and it just went to uh, an O2 messaging. Oh, oh I was like, God! Fuck. I, I was I, um, I was given the help button some uh, yeah. I was, I was trying to but just went straight to voicemail. Yeah. So I went outside, rang the head office, and they're like, "All right, so what you gotta do? Drive to the barriers, and uh, if you press the help button there, someone will answer. I was like, Even though it's it's like after eleven, like it, everything's pretty much closed. Yeah, yeah twenty four hour service. All right. So I tactically waited for all the cars around us to leave because I didn't want to be the, the bell end yeah. that was parked there. <coughs> it won't work. Yeah, so I was, like, I was the last one in the queue. Go all the way down, press the button. Same thing happened, just went to voicemail. So I had to reverse all the way back out of the barriers, back to my parking space. At this point, it had been about an hour. I'm trapped in this car park, pissing down with rain outside. Um, very shady looking area. Yeah, it's uh, not Durham itself, but the car park at around 12 uh, midnight. The dark, it's, so it's a bit like... Um, there's people walking in with the bottles of Frosted Jacks and I was like, I'm going to get mugged here. Should have done a, um, a Mr. Bean. Did you ever see the Mr. Bean episode? Mm-hmm. Where he, yes. He, he, he waits. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> just crack them he out. He waits until someone tries. Although it's at midnight. But yeah. <laughs> um, so my only option was, I was like, if I'm lucky. The venue might still have someone in. I must have dropped a ticket at the venue. So I walked out in the, in the pouring rain and as I'm halfway to the venue, I see a piece of paper on the floor face down. I'm trying to pick it up on the off chance it's a ticket and it won't pick up because it's, it's stuck, yes, stuck to the ground. Uh, and I finally scrape it up and it's disintegrating except for the barcode on the uh, top. And I managed yeah. to get back and scan the barcode and I got out from that way. Jesus. Like, had I left that 10 more minutes, that barcode was just... Yeah. Nah. Parking, God, parking is far and away the most stressful part of any gig. Yeah, you know, I, I tried to, I tried to get into Wickham today. Not, like, I'm, I'm trying to organise a gig. Uh, dirty habits, you played the week. Yeah. Try to get parked there. I drove around Wickham for about half an hour to 45 minutes just trying to find somewhere to park well here's all the, yellows <laughs> there's a um there's actually a cop i used to play used to be called the crown mm. I've, i played there many occasions with, with my old band but we used to because we had a van um it was a little bit harder but there's actually a car park you've got to go all the way around it's like around the it's like you, you turn it's like right and then it's like another right and there's a huge car park yeah then you drive all the way down this big car park and then you're literally like just across the road, just for the next time. I'll 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 draw you a diagram. <laughs> it, I'll, a map. I'll, create, yeah. I'll give you a map of where the car park is. Um, but yeah, but I just I'd be fair. I just parked outside the double yellow lines. Well, that's what yeah. they said. So when it's late, you should be fine. Yeah, that was um, perfectly fine. I tell you what, yeah, that's probably the most stressful thing for musicians is the parking. Yeah, because yeah. right. it's not like here's I'm in with a guitar. Nine times out of ten, guitar, big mixing desk, big speakers, and everything, and it's just even it's, even when the parking's quite simple, I seem to struggle. So. Yeah. I was in Fitzy's, which I think is just not far from here, is it? Fitzy's, Sunderland? Oh, yeah, that's honestly, Sunderland is a flipping oh, nightmare. And there was a space outside, but me being me, I thought I can definitely get closer than that. Mm. So I went past that space. It's a one-way system. I had to do about a three-mile drive to get back, yeah. and that space was gone. Yeah. So about another four or five laps till another, you know, I could have been in and set up, but... It's yeah. a gamble, isn't it? I do that time off. I've got to do time off. Oh, like, time I can, off. I can definitely right. get parked a bit close to the venue, turn around. Oh, that time off. Right. The amount of circles I've done of time <laughs> off car park. Honest to God, I, I know. Um, 
I'm doing Fitzies in a, in a couple of months. I swear to God, I'm I'm bringing one speaker on a trolley and I'm just <laughs> busking. I'm, I'm just taking the metro down. Like yeah. I'm just. Uh, it's yeah, it's <laughs> worth it. I ended up in a taxi rank, I think. I, I ended up parking in the taxi space. Anyway. The, the best place to park is um, if in, in future, obviously you can unload the car mm -hmm. and then you go out and then you park. It's it's just kind of, um, you know, the road. So you'll turn kind of like, you get to the roundabout and you'll turn left and then left. And then you yeah, get and that was the circle I got stuck if on. If you go on... For any listeners, like, I hope you know some of them well. Like it's, if, you go, if you go straight on, I know it's good actually advice to anyone, any, any If you're not from Sunderland, you're like, what uh, you on about? So it's, it's, it's straight on. It's technically the third the third exit. Yeah. Um, and then there's the car park there. It's free after six o'clock. And it's it's always, unless it's like a Sunday afternoon, it, it'll, you'll always have a space. And yeah. that's the closest you'll get. Love it's like a five minute walk and I hate parking honest um, to god just before we wrap up part one uh, I'm going to try a new like fast fast answer round right. uh, we haven't done this yet but basically I'm going to give you ten questions and you just answer yes or no there's no follow up you just go yes no let's go And because uh, we did it last week uh, when we had Stephen he asked a question I was like, any embarrassing stories I went yeah like, cool and I think it would just be cool to have left it at that but we did yeah. go into the story so uh, we have do you have a favourite venue? Yes. Cool. Uh, do you have any funny gigging stories? Yes. Is there a musician you can't stand? L local or famous? Either. Yes. <laughs> uh, have you ever had an embarrassing moment on stage? Yes. Yeah. Uh, has there ever been a fan in the crowd that you couldn't stand? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Have you ever broken equipment? No. Okay. Uh, do you have the same love for your job as you always had? Music, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what we count. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you got anything big coming up? By my standards, yes. Yeah, that's cool. subjective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, have you ever done a collaboration? No. Okay. And last one, have you ever had any wild after parties? Yes. Cool. So yeah. I've uh, got to say that, that other question. <laughs> have you ever had a collaboration? Get, no. I thought you were going to say, would you like to do a collaboration? <laughs> <laughs> kind of no, never, that's why you should do the yeah. set up. I never thought of that. <laughs> would you like to would do a Would you like to do a collaboration? <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we'll refresh. We'll get some drinks and we'll come back in part two, I reckon. Yeah. We'll see you in a bit. Okay. Well, hey. Oh, I do this all the well time, done, you see. I do this all the time. <laughs> and anyway, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yep, welcome back to side two, it's ladies and gentlemen. Side two. I realise <laughs> side one's usually uh, asking our guest who they are and what kind of music they do, but we got so caught up with um, how shit car parking is. Yeah. Yes, um... um so yeah, what is your music influences? What kind of genre are you at? What do you, I mean, I know this, but for the guys behind Yeah, you. so my influences sit very much in Americana rock music. Mm -hmm. So you're talking um, Bruce Springsteen, Hero yes. Mine, Tom Petty, Hero Mine. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, Brian Fallon, Gaslight Anthem, that side, I really like. Um, and uh, Rolling Stones, I know they're not particularly Americana, yeah, but they're, yeah, they're, they're some uh, heroes uh, of mine. You know what? I'd, 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 I've, I'd, I'd class them a kind of as an Americana, especially like um, some of the between in between the um, like the the when they started off uh, like the Give Me Shelters and the, it was like between the buttons is very mm -hmm. much an Americana album yeah. in my opinion. I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd call I'd call mm. them Americana. Yeah, well, Keith, Keith Richards is kind of my guitar hero if I had to choose one. Not because I believe he's the world's greatest guitarist no, by a long that. shot, yeah. but I think he's just the coolest. It's, you know? it's the style <laughs> and all, like really yeah. That's I always say, like, oh, who's who's your best? It's, to me, it's like it's who I like to hear. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily who's like technically the best. Yeah, he's one of the few rhythm guitarists that you can pick out of a crowd. Normally, a rhythm guitarist is a rhythm guitarist, yeah. but when Keith Richards plays rhythm, you, know which you can tell you yeah. a mile off because yeah. of his open G tune and yeah, all, all that side of it, you know. Um, I went to see them in Hyde Park just the other week with them Sam Fender supporting them. It's brilliant. So yeah, that's that's kind of the genre that um, in, inspired my music. It's my kind of yeah. uh, 
my kind of yeah. music and all to be fair yeah I mean I think if you were to listen you'll you'll, you'll probably hear that yeah. that side of it filter into it yeah I was uh, I was doing a uh, I, well, I, I was doing like a bunch of gigs and stuff uh, with Beyond Vinyl and Beyond Records, and uh, I, was, I was just there chatting because we were talking about obviously the the chart push that we did, and uh, one of your songs came on. I can't remember which one it was, yeah. but I was like, "Is this Chris Norris?" I was like, "Yeah." I was like, it's not often I recognise local musicians unless I really know that. Like, if you're one of your songs or Scots came on, I'd, yeah, or Stevie's, I'd know them. I'll take that. But I was like, "Yeah, like this is a Chris Norris classic." I, yeah, I knew it. I was like, "I know exactly who this is." <laughs> uh, seen him live many a times, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. There's like that kind of distinctive sound. Yeah, yeah. But it's a, a pretty cool sound. I definitely recommend yeah. everybody. And it's not something out. I go. I don't go out to sound American. I don't go out no. to you know. Uh, well, it's just your influences. It is. Then uh, you, it's you, just, you project yeah. what you hear and what you like, and you mm-hmm. put it in your own way, which obviously yeah. is gonna naturally sound like. Yeah, you get, you I get, I get annoyed when people are like, "Oh, you're just trying to be like Ed Sheeran or Blink One Eight Two. It's like, well, no, but they are part of where I'm at. I like, like uh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, there I'm is like, some of yeah. them in there. I'll write a song about my own experience, but because I like the melody or I like the type yeah. of guitar that's used, I'm gonna I'm gonna look try at that because I'm gonna think, oh, I quite like I quite like how that sounds. Let's yeah. try that for me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing how it happens. Like I'll, I will try to write something different. So not everything's mm-hmm. like an anthem. Not you know we'll take a ballad, and by the time you've put it all together and built the song up. Suddenly, it's way back into being, yeah, you know, exactly the the, the, yeah, the yeah. genre that you always seem to write, and yeah. not a deliberate thing. It just as long as you just start yeah. with going, you know, I'll make something like that, and it's about, so. For example, Home I released the other week. That was originally a starting point was Bad Habits, actually, mm-hmm. um, and I, it, obviously in production, uh, I can, it, I can it hear turned, that actually. Yeah. It turned less Bad Habits and more Conor Michael. Yeah. But you you, you kind of use your influences as a starting point. Yeah, so mm-hmm. you go right. Yeah, I'll use. A Bruce Spring- Springsteen, and then it'll become Chris Norris one before you know it. But there'll be someone in the crowd who's like, "Oh, he's just trying to be Bruce Springsteen." No, but I did use like him as an influence. Right. Bruce Springsteen was was only trying to be someone else before them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's all it's like evolution. Everybody copies someone. Exactly. Everybody. Yeah. So yeah, part two. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I'd get that out there, you know. Just yes. uh, we are a music podcast, not a <laughs> yes. And now for some non-music scenarios. Yeah. So. We were saying in the break, we've had some before, like zombie apocalypse, what do you do kind of thing. Uh, this one, we've got, you woke up in a haunted hotel room. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Just, that's it. You, you, well, you, ran, you don't I am a big, in. I am a big believer of ghosts. So I mean, I'll play this, through, play this through my head. But um, no, haunted hotel, we're talking middle of the night here. Yeah, we're talking, you don't remember going to the hotel. You've just woken up. All right. And you're now in a random room. Figured out it's a hotel room. It's a little bit spooky. Things start to move, mm-hmm. and you 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 know it's paranormal. It's not like the wind's got in. Or there's a breeze moving that. First things first. And... Go for the lights. Do they not yeah. work? I presume in this scenario. Oh, I don't know. It's what? a it's a haunted hotel. I suppose they they do, but it doesn't stop the ghosts. Mm-hmm. Well, it doesn't stop the whatever. So how do I know it's haunted? Um, it's it's one of them good instincts. You can kind of see things are starting to shift, like a poltergeist right. kind of thing. You, you, okay. yeah. You're getting shadows walking across. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, that's kind of things that you... First things, go for the phone. Let's check what time it is. Yeah. Let's, you know, yeah. let's try and get some light out there. Um, probably in reality, hide, get under the covers, Yeah. Sc- shout for help. But in this scenario, no, I'll start calling out. I'll ask him... Uh, is anybody there? I say, they're, they're okay. this, I should probably build yeah. a story up with this. I'm going to start mm-hmm. doing I will story this. So scenario is electric, tr- electricity works, signal doesn't work. You're the only one in this hotel. There's no room service, there's no nothing. It's just you and mm-hmm. whatever's around you. You can't call out, but you can turn lights on, you can use... Yeah, try the door. Yeah. yeah. Let's try the doors. The door's locked, I presume. I'm stuck in a room here. Yeah. Um, let's start calling out. Let's try to get some reaction off the ghosts. Yeah. See, see, see if we can interact. That's right, because a lot of yeah. people go haunted. Oh, but oh, they could be friendly ghosts. Exactly. Get a little Casper in the corner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this place is haunted. If anyone here <laughs> is uh, watching us, knock three times. Mm-hmm. Ah, you got the same <laughs> idea as me. <laughs> Technically, you did twice. I did once. So yeah. That worked. There we go. Yeah. It's haunted. Check the windows. Let's see. See if there's any escape routes. Yeah. Um, but I'm guessing this hotel in this story is in the middle of nowhere, so I can't. Probably, yeah. yeah. I'll make the story up as well. Yeah. Don't sure, worry. yeah. I need to put more effort <laughs> in these podcasts. <laughs> so yeah, I think you've got two options: you either cower and hide, or you call the ghosts out, try to 
find out what's going on. Either they're friendly or they're not. If they're not, you're screwed. I uh, suppose. Cause, yeah, cause if you're, you're stuck on. Because if you call in the ghosts, then uh, usually, if, especially if it's like a horror thing, the more interaction you have with them, the more powerful they get, and eventually they end up like you know. Like stabbing you in your sleep if it's uh, that's me worry you yeah. end up in one of those situations where you get lifted out of the bed and then you're really knackered you know? I mean let's let's put the scenario so say we've got like you wanted to spend the night but you've you've bought yourself a load of beers and you know you you ended up having you wanted a good like you know good drink and stuff like that by the fire and you, maybe a, a cheeky uh, you know um, <laughs> if you're alone you know all I'm saying um, but you've got the you've cheeky got, book read yeah you've got yeah. <laughs> You've got the supplies. <laughs> You've got like all the snacks and and stuff like that. Um, I'd essentially. Would you do that if you knew you were in a haunted hotel? Would I have known it was haunted at the time? I, if I knew oh, a hotel if you knew was you're haunted, in a haunted hotel, would you try it? <laughs> I'd probably just let see if they would do their thing. <laughs> <laughs> do your worst podcast. <laughs> oh, it could be actually. I wonder if there is like a. <laughs> I think we should do a podcast from Chillingham Castle. You ever been there? A scary yeah, I mean, one. Halloween's oh, coming up soon. We could yeah. do a little that's Halloween special. That's a bad special. idea, right? Uh, that's a spe- right. Yeah. Should we do that yeah. Halloween special? I could do. See if we can get a castle or something. Mm-hmm. Be pretty cool. We've got a month to plan that. Well, mm-hmm. let's, let's plan it now. No, uh, so, so, but my thing was, I wouldn't sleep. I would get in the room with the... So there's going to be rooms, if it's a haunted house, there's going to be rooms with like nights and stuff like that. I'd I thought we were stuck in one room. Oh, we were stuck in one room? Well, you woke up in a room. Oh, I woke up in a room. You're in a hotel room. I you couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get up the door. Uh, woke up in a haunted hotel room. Oh, right. I'd, I'd have the snacks and everything in this hotel room. I don't know. You just woke up. Well, I'll search for, like, I don't know. My thought was I'd search for coffee, energy drink, so what not. Stay. I just, think I'm with, stay. with Chris in the hall. There's an escape. You've got to, even if you go into to nothingness. But it's going to, it's haunted. It's going to be Halloween. It's going to be really cold. If you've just woke up, where's your clothes? You, you, you freeze. Um, well, I mean, no, first check would be, have you got clothes on? <laughs> 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 you're running out with a blanket. You're basically, <laughs> the rest of your decisions are made from that. <laughs> yeah, so I think first, act second. Um, <laughs> I'm very much different. I'll be halfway through the woods going, let's be pants. <laughs> but the, the thing is, the, the woods, the woods could, could be haunted as well. There's nothing worse than a haunted woods because mm-hmm. they, they hide everywhere, like they hide in the trees and all sorts of stuff. Yes, we're regular siren. It's not a regular siren. <laughs> Every episode. <laughs> exactly. It is, yeah. You know, I'm going to time it, right? This is five past eight this week. We'll see what happens next week. You know, this could be like one of those uh, Truman Show um, realisations that we're yeah. actually in a, in a show and like they're, they're just... Right, they're doing I've got one. a theory on that right. in, in the sense of me and actually believe this. It's, everything's a simulation. I'm that kind of person. Though. Yeah, I think it is. Because uh. we were listening to a podcast about ghosts and uh, how they, they there's a, a crime scene in America and... Uh, long story short, basically the ghost of the murder victim was able to like point out all the evidence. Go, this is how I died. This is where the evidence is, etc. And they mm-hmm. they couldn't use that as valid evidence, but it did lead them to everything. And I was like, do you reckon the theory is because ghosts are difficult to believe? I'm not saying they're not real, but they're difficult to believe in yeah. the sense that someone's not there, but they're there. No, but it seems more plausible that let's say if you're playing The Sims and somebody deleted a character. But it, a glitch occurred, and they mm-hmm. left the Sims, but they haven't technically left the, the memory computer. Is still there. It's still yeah. in there, so that person's still walking around like a glitch. Yeah. You just can't yeah. physically see them. Well, that's that's that. And that's it, a good thing. Somehow theory. that feels more valid than ghosts. Uh, there's there's, a, there's a lot of a lot of glitch in the Matrix stories. Yeah. Glitch in the Matrix yeah. podcasts also. It's, it's yeah. Love them stuff. And you know, there's the theory that. We're going well down a rabbit hole here. Yeah, we are. But, uh, <laughs> you know, people presume aliens are from different planets. Yeah. Are they not just in it? Is everything not just here? Exactly. Just different yeah. dimensions. Ghosts yeah, just, come from just different passing, dimensions. Like going through yeah, the dimension. Just for, just for that like, brief period. Yeah. You know. You know. I've, I've seen a ghost. Slowly. Yeah. Are you in a hotel room alone? I was. No, I was. It Did was actually. It was the. It was the day. It was the day after um, my wedding, and <laughs> me and the wife. In fact, I didn't see the ghost. Right. Um, the cat saw the ghost, but it was like. Um, so it was the day after our wedding. We went to Slaley Hall, and there was um, there was no one in. It was it was class. We was in this room, massive room, by ourselves. Um, I've been there before. It's quite I'm nice. Sure I went to a wedding. It was it, we had a um, we had a bit of a pickle because I didn't realise you had to order food 
like uh, order like like booked to get into a restaurant and nice. all the restaurants were booked so we were absolutely starving so like everyone was in the restaurant and we were kind of by ourselves starving I nicked all the nuts from every single table we <laughs> 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 got in eventually at like um, I mean this is another story I'm going to diverge but so, no, this is what you're doing in a haunted hotel room yeah. you're stealing nuts from the yeah. boss you're answering the question yeah. forward <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't a hotel room it was a four, like a four year it was like a big big room big windows um Huge mirrors, and we were just chilling with our drink. And Caps went, oh, "There's a there's a guy there, just like just just past us, like it's like a reflection of a guy." She's like, "What are you talking about? There's, there's no one here." Then all of a sudden, the fire doors shot open. Now, if you know fire doors, they've got you know the push a bit bars. Of pressure to do it, doesn't it? Not only that, but they only open, like from the out, like from the inside. inside out. Yeah. So there's no like no the windows. Window windows were closed. Well, you couldn't even open the windows because they're so so big. Or if there was, there were small ones. But the pressure couldn't. And I tried to close them again, and it was a tough as yeah. Shit. It was heavy, heavy doors. I was like, a gust of wind could not have done that. So the minute from Cat seeing this reflection going, oh, there's a flipping reflection, and then these doors, two doors, like shooting open. I was like, yeah, I'm freaked out now. <laughs> so what did we do in that situation? I think we just like chilled out in the whiskey snug, actually, just talking about it. Because yeah. I, I tried to Google Slaley Hall Ghost and there's no information on it. But yeah, we we experienced a paranormal activity mm-hmm. that night. Wow. That we cannot explain. Yeah. Well, and you got out safely. We did. So we yeah, don't... I'm going to stay coarse because uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could have run out that, with the ghost. I think I'm but, Chris, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah, I don't think I have it in is to stay. Yeah. I'd be like freaked out. You try the door. If that didn't work, you'd have to climb out the window and somehow phys- figure out how to climb down uh, the window. Whether you smash the window or open it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, glass is easier to break than wood. That's Unless you do find out that they're friendly, you know, then that's a different matter. What if they're like bluffing me friendly? Oh well, yeah, I'm one of your pals, and boom. <laughs> yeah, like because uh, I mean, Casper's dad. From, oh no, it wasn't Casper's dad. It was the other guys from Casper the Friendly Ghost. Like the, you know, his mates who like yeah. killed killed the dad. Right. <laughs> Was this part of the film? Uh, I've you not know, seen Casper. I, the I have, but it's been years, yeah. oh. years ago. Well, the dark <laughs> died. Long time. Don't remember like, being this dark. <laughs> in, well, Casper the friendly ghost wanted. There was like a machine downstairs that brought brought people to life, and like Casper the friendly ghost used. I mean, spoiler alert. Casper the friendly <laughs> ghost, because the dad died from the other ghosts pretending to be the friends. Yeah. Um, he brought the dad back to life. I can't remember what happened after that. <laughs> I think Casper the Friendly Ghost did eventually be alive for like half an hour or whatnot. So. Became Casper the Friendly. Casper the Friendly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he was a bit of a knob, to be fair, like, <laughs> but I mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we'll, we'll shift on. Yeah, we will. Because uh, you're right, we went down a rabbit hole there. <laughs> yeah. um, when we started the part two, we, we started getting Would You Rather's quite frequently. Yeah. So we, we've got three here. Um, would You Rather, like, you're eating your cereal in the morning. And uh, there's no milk. So you've got to use one or the other. Would you rather water as its replacement or lemon juice? Mm. Lemon juice for me. I was thinking, as, as, yeah. as obvious as water sounds, yeah. it's a bit flavor, You're going to end it? up with a very bland... Yeah, yeah, a bit extra. Yeah. Well, you'd, yeah, you could, yeah, I've you'd been eat... enjoying a gold nugget recently. I think lemon wouldn't be too bad with that, but... A lot of lemon juice. I've, I mean, mm-hmm. I've, I've had orange juice and I've like ate a thing and then drank the orange juice while it's still inside the mouth. And it's not, I mean, it's not the most tasty thing, but it's it's. But are we palatable. talking like Jif lemon juice here, like the pure, you know... Th- you know the little green bottle you put in your pancakes? Yeah. You've got to have a milk size. That's different. That's that. very different to a thing of orange juice. That's, that's like know? having some uh, Cheerios <laughs> yeah. in this bad boy. Uh, so, yeah, okay, I, I think I'll... <laughs> I think I'll go, I might go lemon. I'm then. going lemon, yeah. Oh, lemon. I thought water was an obvious answer. <laughs> I thought yeah. it was at first, but then when you th- you break it down, you think, you know what, it's just... Plus the lemon, you, the extremely bitter lemon that you're putting in there, mixed with the sugar, the sugar puffs or whatever you're having, could make quite a pleasant yeah, pleasant breakfast. And, mm-hmm. and if you think about it, it's a good start of the day because it's going to perk you up. The oh, sugar. yeah, you'll get a sugar high for about an and hour. A lot of heartburn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just a bit of Just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the next one is: uh, Would you rather give birth to an elephant or be married to a dog? Now, in the terms of married to a dog, this is a, a universe where it's like ours. It's kind of frowned upon. Um, but dog's yours. You're married to the dog. But how? How would you give birth to an elephant? 
I mean, the elephant is just its one-off experience, isn't it? Yeah, going to be permanent, permanently damaged giving birth to an elephant. Yeah, no, but you've got three blokes yeah. on the table. You're going to be hurt a lot more. You're going to be <laughs> psychologically damaged, married to a dog. So, <laughs> yeah, I might take the elephant. Yeah, I'm going dog. <laughs> I, I mean, the dog is, is a good companion, and you know you. However frowned upon it is, it's you'd be on like OK and Hello magazine. <laughs> you'd, you'd be able to sell your story. Oh, over the city is bad for city. I married my dog. But the first person to give birth to an elephant, that's a bit of a... Oof. That's, yeah, that's be a scientist, kind of like... I mean, he'd be in a wheelchair for, your, for life, probably. For a little bit. But you, would you have to How carry the elephant? the elephant? Would you have to carry the elephant for nine months? It's going to be the... Because I'm sure elephants are a longer pregnancy than nine months. Ah, uh, so we'd I'm be sure longer. two years. Oh, have a double check with that. And how do you get impregnated in the first place? Don't, we don't want to indulge into that rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this brings no, more answers. Please, answer, nobody more Google that. That's like <laughs> that's, that's put on a list. <laughs> uh, so, for an African bush elephant, you'd be pregnant for 22 months. Oh, really an yeah. Asian elephant, between 18 and 22 months. Oh, so yeah. that's good. Four months tw- less. Yeah, so <laughs> we'll, we'll average out 20 months. Um, Average dog expectancy, yeah. we'll say 14 years. Yeah, so you're so. married with a dog for 14 years or you're pregnant with an elephant and then giving birth within two years. I mean, um, are you I'm married with a dog. dog for like the, the entirety of its life? Because I mean, that's... Till death do you part? No, but wait, There's no from, from the dog's... When the dog's born to when the... I mean, we'll, we'll give you an expectancy of 14 years married. Right. Um... Yeah, I, might, I might go, actually, yeah. I, I might go married because it could be a loveless marriage. It could be like a Rottweiler or something. No offence to Rottweilers. You get plenty <laughs> exercise. <laughs> Plenty walks. You'll not be walking anywhere if you give birth to an elephant. So <laughs> yeah, let's, that's true. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah, I would like to uh, change my answer, please. Yeah, you're going to marry to a dog. I'm going to marry a dog, yeah. I'm toying with the elephant thing. Because ah, that's what I thought. I, mean, I assume nine months, but you talk about 20 months, and that's just like, I think that's... Plus, just imagine how big the elephant's going to be, like, you know, 10 months Do you have to raise it after? Or is that it's just... You just I'm give birth. So I'd, I'd be happy to raise an elephant I gave birth to. <laughs> <laughs> I love to have the you know when the animal rights come through oh you're not legally allowed nothing. well I legally have a birth certificate here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nelly come on Nelly yeah <laughs> that would be a cool one um, people would give up seats on metros and buses for you for 22 months because presumably, if this is allowed, you'd then you would be stretched graft, and yeah. you'd, you'd need a skin graft at the end would of it. Would be fine. Uh, I'd just make it look like, oh, that's all this weight. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be like, you know, um, you know uh, Austin Powers and Fat Bastard lost mm. all the weight. <laughs> you'd be like that, just like... And then I presume the drugs would help you get through yeah. the final stage. Then it's done and dusted. So what we're seeing? I'm seeing dog. I'm going elephant. <sighs> um, no, I'm going to go dog. I think I can... Yeah. And uh, the final one... This is a bit of a suicidal one. Uh, would you rather jump off the Eiffel Tower or jump into a volcano? Eiffel Tower. Always had a thing about lava. Yeah, I'm not, I don't want to melt to death. I um, definitely see a lot of lava in your lifetime. No, I haven't <laughs> seen any, to be honest. <laughs> it's how it is. It was the film Volcano. Did you ever see that? Yeah, 1997. That film. You know this? You're not seeing it. Nah, you need to go home and watch it oh, tonight. It's, it is such a good. It was the, that, on Netflix. The, the, the metal scene. Yes, that's uh, exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. There's a scene where the metro gets stuck in the underground. So passengers are all like yeah. needing rescue and the lava's coming underneath the train. So the train's starting to melt around them and this guy has to go in and save them. And they get everyone off. Then he realizes the driver's still passed out at the other end. Mm. So he has to make his way to get the driver with the, the train melting under his feet and melting around him. Yeah. And he comes back to the end. He has to jump into the lava to chuck the guy over it and you see him melt. Yeah. yeah. I, watched, yeah, that's, it's, I was seven when that came out. Yeah, yeah. that's it. The, the things our parents yeah. used yeah, to let us watch. I genuinely <laughs> scored us for years. I was Tommy Lee Jones, wasn't it? I was like, yeah. I was honestly, as, as, as far as like d- d- uh, disaster movies go, mm. that was that was. There was that in Dante's Peak. Did you see that I one? I saw as well? Dante's Peak as well. That's that where the grandma's good. legs melt off in the oh, acid layer. Yeah. It's another disturbing one. Ah, uh, because they go they go like skinny dipping, and the water turns to sulfur, don't mm-hmm. it? Like, yeah. It's, but yeah, so Eiffel Tower, yeah. definitely. Oh, I think I'd go Volcano. I just feel like Eiffel Tower's a bit, a little uh, fence, but a bit basic. <laughs> I would um, I would probably do Volcano as long as I got to recreate that end scene with uh, of the Lord of the Rings with, with 
golem. You can do what you want, yeah. yeah. You probably don't have a ring that makes you invisible or out, but... My God. I'm <laughs> sure the... Uh, you've got, you've got, got a wedding got a ring, ring. I'm I can, sure. Yeah. Cat wouldn't mind if this was the five yeah. hours. <laughs> I could destroy the one room from the fiery chasm so if, it came. If I was doing the the volcano one, I would want Lord in like the end of Terminator 2. You oh, know, yeah, where, where he goes in. And I would try to keep me composure to give the <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, worth it. Yeah. No, no, it is. You jump into or jump off of. All oh, right, so no, I'll go on Eiffel Tower. Uh, I, yeah, I'm going to go volcano because volcanoes are cool. And you say you wouldn't, you wouldn't like melt like that. It would just be like you would just feel it, like I have like incredibly excruciating pain for like just a few seconds. Well, that's it. Like on the off chance you survive the Eiffel Tower, you can't be paralysed. You got to live the rest you, of that. You'll definitely not survive. You're not surviving the volcano. <laughs> yeah. Even if you did, then few seconds, the next mm-hmm. few you'd be done. <laughs> to be fair, because it depends how active the volcano is. If you if it's quite thingy, the fumes would knock you out. It's well lucky. Kill you before you just have to go take it like dig, take a deep breath, and it get all the fumes in you. And Off the stage where we talk all things music. <laughs> Off the volcano. <laughs> Off the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we got Eiffel Tower and two volcanoes. Mm-hmm. I'd say that's a yeah. Mm-hmm. Let us know how you'd rather jump. <laughs> <laughs> in love, Paris or Pompeii. The, 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 the engagement <laughs> questions. It's like, how would you want to? Do that? <laughs> I do want to find a Halloween special. I yeah. think that'll be really cool. I think we should try it. Like, yeah, find find a really kind of cool, maybe even just like even like a or just any cool like spooky looking place, and we'll, we'll set up our, our equipment. Just turn the lights off, and yeah, yeah, it could work. I've got some like I've got some like um, different coloured gels, so I could have like reds and purples and stuff oh, to make yes. it look like really like spooky. Agree. Yeah, let's. Uh, well, we'll we'll think about some. We've got well, we'll get back to the music. Um, yeah, that's part two. Pretty much all we had. Um, I'm gonna get maybe half a pint of your apple sours. That's quite nice. I'm gonna get my classic fruity. I felt really bad because um, the the barmaid downstairs was like fruity. I was like, no, what's that? Because <laughs> I always get a fruity. <laughs> I hate to always like you know. I like I like when people go the usual. You know, it makes us feel special. Yeah. Mint. Well, we'll come back to part three and we'll chat more music. Great. Spot on. See you in a bit. Press my button. Hey. <laughs> and that's more sour. Aye, at that the is, end of the barrel. That is, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I've got that toxic, whatever you call it, toxic yeah. waste pint. It's not called that. It's called a. Uh, I did say what it was going to be called. You've just been speaking to the last yeah. episode about it. God, um, I've got a really terrible memory. Summit tea. <laughs> oh, um, twice brewed. Twice brewed. Twice that brewed. Was the one. Twice brewed. And uh, I literally got the last of the barrel, and that is a lot more sour than yours. Not to yeah, not to match up against you, like. But I should mention I've now got a, a pint of health and a pint of stamina for those uh, RPG lovers out there. I do. Yes. There we go. It's they they had a blue one. They did. They did. did for that the, for the mind, which yeah. We used to have the blue one. We yeah. were like, oh, <laughs> magic. Magic. Not to be in mint. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Side three. <laughs> so yeah, well, yeah, we kind of don't take advantage of parts as much as we do, do we? We go part <laughs> one. Right, we'll see you in part two. Then James walks to the camera, turns it off, turns it back on again. We don't do anything, but... This time we actually went downstairs and refilled the drinks. Yeah, we did. I like what? like the like the thing he suggests. Like yeah. The, uh, so what? Uh, what did you get this time, like Chris? I feel a very boring choice, to be honest, compared to this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've made quite colourful, yeah. colourful display over there. <laughs> yeah. um, New Zealand Pale Ale. Mm. Oh, yeah. How's it compared to your previous? It's a. Uh, it's not as fizzy. It's a bit flatter. Yeah. Very, it's very nice, to be honest. Drinkable. Very nice. <laughs> Aye. It's my downside like fizzy drink. I think that's why I like stouts more. Yeah, because it's it is easier to easier to drink. Easier to go mm-hmm. on, the, on the gut as well. It's like less heartburn. Yeah. Um, so yeah, side three. Um, go back to the music. Is there anything specific you would want to improve in your live shows? Anything you do, you think I want to. So for myself, I'm I'm trying to get a wireless guitar jack and a wireless mic so I can do a bit more stage presence. Mm, yeah. You've seen me live; I do the whole loop pedal thing. And if I can get yeah. a track built up, I can be a bit more active on stage. I feel like yeah. if I can produce more energy, the crowd can produce more energy, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, great. I, I've got a wireless. Um, it's called. It's like a PodGo wireless. Mm. I, I don't. Well, uh, yeah, they're, they're absolutely great. 
like just a wireless guitar because you can just you can move around. You, yeah. you can you can sound check really nice as well. You can check what your yeah, guitar yeah, sounds like. A few problems, it's, so. Yeah, it's a funny one for me to be honest. It would be talking. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, a bit more. I have absolute confidence getting up and singing in front of an audience of any size, Agreed. you know, and I feel right at home. Yeah, but I cannot do the banter in between. In yeah, a, not that I can't do it. I'm just. I don't enjoy it. What, so, you, yeah, so within nervous, a, within a like, 45 minute set when a, a lot of people play nine or 10 songs and have a bit crack in between, I seem to be doing 14 or 15, you know, it's, song it's after song after song after one song. after the yeah, other, yeah. you know, quick drink and then I'm back into the next song. Yeah. And so that really, that's one thing crowd I would say. Yes. I always feel weird with crowd banner because I feel like, oh, you've heard all this before kind of thing. Like I've, I've yeah. heard it from someone, they've got it from someone, everybody's heard me say whatever. And it, it depends on the audience as well. It's very easy to have banner with a, uh, um, an audience who are locked in with you, you know, and they're hanging yeah. on every word and listen to your lyrics, listen to your song. 31 minutes past eight. Yeah. <laughs> Truman Short. <laughs> uh, it's very easy to banter with them, mm. but when you're playing to an audience who weren't specifically out for that, yeah. to hear music, you know. Yeah, it's... it's, it's then you're not going to get responses, you know, until maybe towards the end of the night when you've got them on their feet a yeah. bit, but... So, yeah, I am... Um, that's kind of a gift. I had to improve any part, I think would be that. I mean, I'm like that when I do my original gigs, I'll, I'll chat like this song was about this, or yeah. this song was about this. And then when I'm at Filthy's, I'm like, Oggy, Oggy, Oggy. All right, we're fine. That's enough yeah. for me. Well, it's know your audience, isn't it? It's, it's exactly the same. Original yeah. music's very easy to talk about yeah. because there's a story behind every yeah. song. Yeah. But, you so, know, I'm kind of telling a story about Brown Eyed Girl by Van Halen. Yeah. I, Van Morrison. No, same thing. Van Halen. Yes. <laughs> it's not the same thing. <laughs> Ed, edit that out. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. I yeah. think it would be a better song if Eddie Van Halen <laughs> shredded a bit in the middle. <laughs> would you improve any of your live would, original shows? I would... Um, I would you want to look at next? I would get a band. Like, uh, but not, not like a... Not a full-on kind of orchestra or anything like that. I'd just get a guy on like a, just with a kick drum and a thingy and maybe a cymbal. Um, and depending on whether I want to play guitar or bass, either guitar or bass, just very basic. Just where you can, like almost like a traveling band kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to have that kind of kind of vibe. But I just, I'd know my songs would be really awesome just with like a drummer behind, even if I had a drummer to be fair. Yeah, <clears throat> like Amber, my uh, cover band, The Phase. She's always looking for work. She'd I'll tell you what, I'm gonna. Up for your always wondered if the Fears was a cover band or if it was your cover your band. Stuff. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Amber if she wants to be yeah. in my band. I'd, she, yeah, I reckon she'd be up for yeah. that. Because I don't do much gig. The problem is I don't do much gigs. Yes. With uh, yet yeah, that is true. It's once once you get that live presence, you'll be yeah. like. So like for me next year, I'm planning to do a minimum of an originals gig a month. That's I will good, be. Yeah. It won't just be like oh I'll do like this slot here or there. Like I'll yeah. do a festival. That won't count. I mean like. I'm going to try and book little buildings in January. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm in talks with Sunflower Lounge in Birmingham about doing a game. It's a whole different like, game, isn't it? Yeah. A it's whole a lot different tougher, game. But I you feel know? like if I can do a lot more originals and start with, oh, there's two audience members. Oh, no, there's three. You're building an original network because I've built too much yeah, covers network. That's the problem I, I have. It sounds like an obvious problem. Selling <laughs> tickets. I yeah. hate, I hate, hate hate selling tickets, asking people, or oh, can you come yeah. to my show? Mm -hmm. I know it sounds really daft, but I, I hate, like, can you give me money, please? Yeah. Like, that's how I feel with yeah. it. And it's like, I'd rather go, oh, here's a free gig here, but the promoters don't don't want to do that. They want to get mm. ticket sales, and I understand it. It's like, I, but I'm not bothered about being paid to do my original stuff. What makes I'd me feel like is, is when I do a, I did Surf Cafe, and I sold one off a sellout the first time I did it. Yeah. And it still wasn't, it's not a lot of people, and I was like, oh, it feels a bit awkward saying I've only done this many. But then you see, like, the Ed Sheeran's, he's like, oh, I didn't know I could get... 20 quid of a gig until like three years into doing it and it was just always two people turn up to a gig but you were playing and playing it's it's tough to believe that original musicians yeah. do play to six people it's, it, so, it's yeah. slow build up but it's so like disheartening and that's the problem and I, I feel I awkward think, that the sound engineer seeing a bigger crowd I'm like I'm sorry this isn't what you had yeah myself, and you know? I'm, it's, it's the always awkward so how many tickets have you sold I'm like two yeah and I'm like yeah it's, it's so disheartening and it's like um I, I I kind of I almost like uh, and I shouldn't do this but I always do I, I I imagine myself I pick myself up deliberately to fail so I think well I know I'm gonna fail so what's the point and it's like completely the wrong attitude Absolutely. it's it one is, thing uh, I'd, one that's the one, one other thing I'd love to improve so, myself yeah, yeah, self confidence so playing 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 to ten people who bought tickets and are there specifically to hear you is better than playing to a room full of 
you know, people playing covers. I would uh, because they're, they're locked in, they're listening. Yeah, home. Uh, Absolutely. 400 people singing 17 yeah. Gun Under by Fender. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And, and to be 100%. fair, I've, I've got massive amount of confidence in my own ability in terms of playing cover songs mm. and I'll, I'll I'll knock in a I'll knock in an original song like the Espresso Martini song I put that yeah. in Filthies and people go mad for it it's like you, and I'm, I'm playing I'm playing like a good 100, 200 people there playing my own song and they're all mm. going crazy for mm. it Mint but then then my feeling is like oh but if I ask them to kind of go to my gig next Tuesday and spend four or five pounds on a ticket over. it's like yeah it's yeah, the, it's, that's always the, the best the feeling I had was on the weekend, and uh, I, like I said, I did that gig at Castle Branch Cricket Club. And Sunday, I came up and me and Scott did a gig, and we, we nailed it. We did we we do a, a mashup of Jerry Cinnamon Belter into Psycho Killer Talking Heads, yeah. into Tribute Tenacious D, into <laughs> um, Teenagers from My Cattle Romance. Yeah, massive awesome. mashup, and the crowd are bouncing to it, and it's a proper energetic gig. But it had nothing compared to the Castle Branch Cricket Club, and I finished with home. And it, it was the first gig that people I didn't know, like it's not my friends or family, it was like crowd members were there saying, I'm just coming home tonight. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. But they, they bought the CDs, they've been like really supportive and they were really into it. And it's, there's something better about five people singing your song that you don't know than a hundred people yeah. singing a song that everybody yeah. knows. That was, it was a similar experience people. I had in, in Blythe. That was one of the first like recent original gigs. It was 2019. What's Um I can't remember what the hell's it called. It was it was like a battle of the bands thing. It was like a last minute someone oh, dropped out. I was going to do one of them. Um, oh, was it? It would have been the newsoms. It was in newsoms. Yeah, possibly. Uh, I'm sure. Anyway, oh, I wasn't in it. I just live in Blythe. I remember. Pandemic. But anyway, <laughs> I, I played um, Chelsea Jackson stole my pencil. It's yeah, like the last song. song. And then it was just the end. The end bit, you know. Um, and people, people just were going absolutely mental mm-hmm. for it. And I was like, hey really putting me, giving myself really good confidence. Yeah. Someone like came up to us and was like, oh, I've got a festival, you know, here's my card, we'll um, we'll sort something out, we'll get you to play in the in the summer. I was like, oh, this is going brilliant. And obviously, my favorite summer of yours, I then, then I flipped and some guy in China decided to eat a bat, you know, the, the story. Went and then, yeah, and then, um, yeah, that just lost all confidence. Picking it back up now, isn't it? Yeah, I'm starting, yeah. I'm starting to bring myself back up. Mm-hmm. This is why I'm doing, like, um, you know, I was talking about when I'm changing my name from Torn Apart by Lisa back to James Bowie. Torn Apart by Lisa is the the stage where I've been, where I've just no confidence, no anything. New and persona. I'm, and that, yeah, I'm, I'm making a hook for all them. I know it's supposed to be a podcast about you, I'm very sorry. I'm enjoying it, carry on. <laughs> but, um, it's a music podcast, we're all in. But I've, yeah, I'm, I'm planning, um, planning to release an album called Torn Apart by Lisa, which is basically the experience of being pushed up, going all the way down, and then slowly finding yourself, finding your name. Finding your personality, idea. yeah, yeah, it's like it's a roller coaster. You know what? People don't understand the difference in a stage name. Like obviously, yeah. I, I pick Connor Michael because um, my name is Connor Michael Walsh, and uh, Connor I always Walsh wondered was, that as well. Yeah, I'll say why is there um, two different Facebook accounts? So Connor Walsh was when I first started music was already a Spotify artist, so I had to pick a different name. And then Connor Michael worked, and there was no other one at the time. There was a Connor Michael Smith. I'm in competition with him, but he wasn't third in the UK charts, um, and. There's a difference between, and as weird as it is because it's the same person, but Connor Walsh and Connor Michael, like I could have a really shit day and be like, I can't, can't be asked to like get out of bed. I, I'm just going to sit on FIFA. I'm, I'm not going to go busking. I, I'm, and then, right, I've got a gig because it's my job. I have to do the gig. Yeah. And uh, even, even as, as much as I used to gig in hoodies, and, like that's the Connor yeah. Michael uniform. The second I put a hoodie on, the crowd, it was like, boom, different personality. And then finish, take the hoodie off, back to where it was at. Yeah. And it's so weird that a different name, even though it's the same person, is a different like mm-hmm. mental persona. Well, that's it. Uh, so it's like yeah, change and torn apart from Lisa to James Berry is gonna be a different like. Well, that's it. It's basically torn apart by Lisa. It was basically just my loss of yeah. self. Do you ever get like obviously? <laughs> I, I presume your name is Chris Norris. Yeah, it is. Um, I. Do you ever get that point where you're like, oh, because I'm get like, for example, I'll gig with the bracelet. And when I'm mm-hmm. not getting it's strange as it is when I'm not getting with that bracelet, I'm like, oh, I feel really empty. Do you have like a, no, a part I, routine that makes you feel better on stage then? I don't think so. It, I mean, it's a bit of a broader one, but yeah. that guitar, yeah. you know, I, I have a few acoustic guitars, but that one there is my comfort blanket. It makes you feel and there's cold. nothing flashy about it. I've got a Fender acoustic that I take as a backup that people will often say, well, what are you not playing your Fender yeah. for? But I don't feel right, you know. I, I feel with that. that. Yeah, it's like that a weird not, connection, Nothing can it? go wrong. Yeah. you know, it doesn't matter who I'm playing in front of. Nothing can go wrong. You know what the tacker means? Either beautiful no. guitars. 
yeah. beautiful guitars. And you get my original Shearer and fix-up stock soon. And oh, that's what's throwing us at the minute is because the next thing we're doing is I've got the full band together. That was my next question. Uh, you mentioned band. Is this a covers band or is this a you band? No, it's the Chris Norris band. Oh. So it is going to be, it is playing all my original stuff. Cool. So I can't use that. I do for a couple of songs, but I use me Gretsch. Yeah. Which, which is it. So it's um, it's a four piece. It's drums, it's bass, it's um, lead guitar and more rhythm guitar yeah. and vocals. And it's taken, um, it's taken all the, well, not all the songs I've put out, but the songs that I thought would suit the live environment more with the band, you know, the rockier side of it, mm-hmm. and taking them on the road. This year for three more uh, kind of showcase gigs, you know, to get, we're going to cover the three major cities. So we're doing any volume in Stockton where I played yeah, with you once. We're actually doing Fitzies, what I've already spoke about a couple of weeks later. I mean, I've seen you play because I was at that gig. I've just realised. Yeah, yeah. I've just realised. I've realised. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> I, I knew. I knew. I knew <laughs> something from somewhere. I couldn't think. So yeah, thank yeah. you for reminding us. Sorry. Yeah. Go on. It, it I just feels that, like that was one of those like <laughs> shock moments. Like yes, I know exactly. Uh, yes. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, into the fields was the other one. Yeah, That's right. I. Um, and sure I've seen you other places as well. But possibly, possibly. And then finishing off in November at the bucket list one for me, which is the Clooney in Newcastle. One or two. Oh, one. Yeah. That was weird. Did you, not, you ever played the Clooney one before? No, I've just it's seen really loads weird. of mint bands. Yeah. Because I've, I've done Clooney 2 twice. I prefer Clooney 2. I've headlined Clooney 2 yeah. and it's cool because you've got a stage and you've got a crowd in front of you mm-hmm. and then there's a few feet back there's like these weird theatre kind of styles yeah. there, sitting area. And it's kind of Clooney 1 I've supported before and you're on your stage and at the far back there's railings and there's like where people are standing uh-huh. and then there's this big drop below you where the standing area it's is. Weird. It's a funny and setup. People are, are like looking at the band going, yeah, I like that. It's like, so weird having yeah. such, like, I don't mind the stage being high, but a stage uh, shouldn't be like 10 foot higher than the audience. It's it's a, yeah, it's almost if like the person designed it's like you're it playing like, to a pit. I want, you know, I want, I want a big stage, I want a massive, yeah. you know, I want to feel like below Glastonbury, but then the mm. room's like, you know, yeah. not, not. It was, it's such a weird, yeah. design. Like, I like Clooney, too. Clooney One is a great gig to play. Yeah. I just thought looking down at the audience was really, Different. I've always preferred Clu- just same as I always preferred Academy Two as well. Any yeah. bands who played the Academy Two, mm-hmm. like upstairs, I thought it was just a cooler room. Just, it was, I, I just started out when I was did the Clooney One support, and before I went on stage, I was like, oh, just hey, you know, we've had like the Sound Fender and Octa Monkeys have all played this before. I was like, oh, that's kind of like, oh, and uh, and Ed Sheeran's played this. I was like, oh, there's some pressure, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've got an Ed Sheeran song in this set just to kind of yeah. spice the crowd up. And... Yeah, but Clooney One will be a good one for you. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one to finish on, you know. Um, so we've. We've been practicing, we've been rehearsing now for a few months. We were meant to be playing this Friday, as it happens, mm. at the um, at an event in Tynemouth, but headline band pulled out and all got cancelled. But worked out in the, in the better in the long run because yeah. on the back of that, the Clooney gig came around. So a couple extra weeks of um, rehearsals, and sharpening up, and then we're going to go out there, get three good gigs in this year, see how we're sounding, and then I can... Um, Focus on really hitting the original gigs hard Absolutely, next year. Yeah. Right. Do you know when they are? Do you have any dates you want to announce, or are they? Yeah, still... sixth sixth of October, so that's a Thursday night. Check my diary as I speak now. We are in um, any volume, Stockton. Gig in that night. I want to say. I want to say the twenty fourth of October. We're at Fitzies in Sunderland. Is that a Thursday? Monday. No, it'll be. It'll not be that. Twenty seventh is a Thursday. It might be that. I'm at a wedding. Again. <laughs> well, what's the week before? The week before is the twentieth. Tell you what I'll do. Just Google because I might. Because uh, I'm currently so, available. I'm, on I'm the I love how we're just all getting our phones out and stuff like that in the middle of a live podcast. This is where you guys be checking your diary. Like, I can do this date. Ah, there you go. Nice fancy poster for you. Oh, lovely. Twentieth. Okay. Twentieth mm-hmm. of October. And November twenty fourth is on you. Oh, twentieth of October. I'm in Prague. I would have went to the Fitzies one because I was going to say I'm. Twentieth of October, Sunderland. Twenty fourth of November is Newcastle. Oh, nice. Fourth and even oh twenty fourth like are you available twenty fourth? I'm available twenty. Do you know what you know what we should do? I've always wanted to do it like a pre, like a pre interview, like a special. Oh, I think we've had the same mindset. I'm hundred percent up for that. Yeah. Who, who's your support slots on these then? No, we we are supporting it to um, a band called Sundown. Right. So, mint. Shall we check yeah. them out and see if they want to? Be part of like a, a live Siren Three on the and a Siren mm-hmm. Three. It's, it's getting it's getting busy uh, this this Tuesday. What's your band called? Is it just Chris Norris Band or yeah, yeah. Nice and simple. So where's is that at the Clooney? Is it Clooney? Ah, oh, nice. Well, 
Oh, now, that could be a good that. little, uh, canny little episode, wouldn't it? The new one, Mint House tickets. I don't know yet. They haven't officially announced that one yet. Okay. So the ticket prices will be coming out. So if so. anybody's interested, uh, me and James are going to go down and watch a gig on the 24th of November at the Clooney One. And pretend uh, that we're professionals. Uh. Yeah, we'll, we'll do like a whole... We'll, we'll get you in the band. We'll do like a little bit of a, a Q&A. We're looking forward to the gig. What's your favourite song? What you, you know, that kind of we'll stuff. We'll have the advertising board out there. Um, yeah, know, I'm, I'm up the for things. that. And yeah, even, even if the, uh, the sound guy's all right with you recording a few of the songs and we can make like a little YouTube clip of we want to see these guys live and get a bit more yeah I've got a little I've got like I mean I've got I've got lots of cool recording stuff but I mean I've got a specific small recorder that's just you could just phone out it yeah and just so it'll, it'll just record the mix yeah. just direct if, if you're alright with that go, go for it but yeah we it. can do stuff like that we mint a good little yeah. night on Thursday that, yeah. we'll probably be at Filthy's after but we mm-hmm. can do it beforehand uh, yeah of it's course Thursday. Yeah. sounds yes, good to me get yourself down November 24th obviously the other gigs if you're more local to wherever you live yep. Sunland was the 20th and Stockton when was that 6th Six. Sixth. Sixth, if you're local yeah. to them go check them out obviously we'll also advertise it yeah. we're now doing a thing which we'll end up advertising that on the, on the Thursday. Yeah, we will, yeah. um, on Thursdays on our Instagram polls, we advertise like local gig guides. Mm-hmm. And we do Clooney 1 and 2. We do the Forks Room. Um, as this comes out, I think Panic will have just played what's coming out the week after. Either way, it's on the Instagrams. Um, HMV, we're helping for them. They've been quite supportive with our podcast. Yes. And uh, yeah, we, so we'll, we'll obviously, we'll advertise... Chris's band playing again and we'll, we'll let you know we'll put t- t- links in and stuff and brilliant that's the part of the podcast it's not about just chatting it's like we're trying to push gigs you've got anything yeah. original let us know we'll, we'll yeah. push it as well oh that's great um, right. yeah which so with the band because obviously it takes a bit to get used obviously when I do my originals I'm just on a loop pedal so mm-hmm. I can train myself um, how long have you been practicing with but how long have you been starting to set this up so I would say we're going back about four months now okay. three four months so what I did was I was in a position where I don't, everybody that I got in for the band are all extremely experienced musicians. Yeah. Mm. Um, so some examples, the drummer is Paul Stevenson. He's a drummer from Long Sands. I don't know if you know the Long Sands Northeast okay. band. Um, the bassist was in a band called NRG back in the day. He's also called Paul Stevenson. Paul, two Paul Stevensons in my band. It's be called the Paul Stevenson. I was going to say, I don't think it's the Chris Norris band anymore. No, they, <laughs> You've been overruled. It's, the WhatsApp group is a nightmare. I never know who I'm talking to or anything. Um, Call one Paul and one Paul. Lead, yeah. lead guitar is actually my brother, Paul Phil Norris. My brother, Paul Stevenson. What was his name, sir? <laughs> Phil, Phil Norris. Phil Norris. Yeah, he plays in a quite a well-known wedding band around the northeast called the Fontaines. I know the Fontaines. I know them. You do? Yeah. They well, they they around the same same circuit as because I'm in mean, the band Red Wings, mm-hmm. so it's like the same AMV uh, circuit. No, they're a good band. Yeah. So Phil Phil's my brother. So he's the cool. lead singer and guitarist of the Fontaines. He's the lead guitarist for this. So everybody it was one of those things where I thought I'll bring in like the best people I know. You know, let's and everybody went off and did their homework. So that very first practice, just everybody's. We yeah. said we'll do this song first, and it was one, two, three, four, and it could yeah. have been on stage. Yeah. You know, it was just straight yes. in there. So, which song of yours do you think the band have nailed the most? So this isn't saying that other songs aren't there, but which one do you think is like, oh shit, that one's it's a, where it, it should it's be. It's a song called uh, "Turbulent Times." It's um, it's actually I'll, I'm going to play that on this podcast acoustically. Mm-hmm. And the recording of it is very much acoustic. It's it's me, I think I played acoustic lead over the top of it with just a tambourine. But when the band puts it together, it becomes a whole other... It starts off with almost a an epic Springsteen-style piano intro that is nowhere on the record, you know, that leads into it. Then the drums kick in, there's no drums on that. And it becomes this upbeat, almost like celebration song, you know, that builds up and builds up and... Totally transforms it. Right, yeah, cool. totally transforms it. Yeah. So that I think that's the one I'm most excited to to play on stage. Looking yeah. forward to hearing it now. Yeah. Play it off um, the stage. <laughs> yeah. So before we go, um, have you got specific social medias that people can find you or the band or? Yep. So search um, both of my solo stuff and the band stuff are just controlled by my Facebook page. So Chris Norris Music. Search that. You'll find me. Um, Instagram, which you've been tagging us in anyways, Chris Norris 8989. Um, you'll find updates on there. Spotify, the usual streaming platforms, yeah. all the original music's on there, waiting to go. Fantastic. I'm looking to um, I'm looking to get back into the studio. I'm going into the studio in starting November to put some acoustic tracks down 
We're going to get the full band in in January. We're going to redo a lot of the earlier tracks because they were recorded at a time when I, yeah. I did it all myself. You know, I'm yeah. no sound engineer, so we're going to... Redo them. We're going to redo That's them. We're going to do them, get them professionally mixed, mastered, Mint. get them out there early next year, a couple of new tracks recorded, and see what 2023 brings. It's awesome. Got to get through these first three gigs first, though. Let's... Yeah, <laughs> That's it. you got to you build that. Let's not um, get ahead of myself. But yeah, we'll, we'll come down to Clooney. Once the tickets are out, let us know. We'll, we'll uh, do. We'll get ourselves. I'll get some tickets. That one. Um, for anyone who hasn't followed us, uh, do follow us. We're uh, off the stage UK on everything, but on Twitter, we're off the stage too because we still haven't sorted that domain. It's episode 17, and I still haven't sorted iTunes out. I will try. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big rant about 10 episodes ago about how iTunes wasn't easy enough to use. <laughs> uh, very good for music, very bad for podcasts. <laughs> um, yeah, let us know if there's anybody you want us to get on off the stage. We're more than welcome to bring them on. Um, it's been a, an absolute pleasure to get yourself on there, Chris. You were always on our list of people to get on. We just hadn't got round to yourself yet. <laughs> so, you know, we've um, got this huge... Oh, we'll get these. I've, honestly, these people have asked like two months ago and I still haven't like set a date for. Yeah. I will get, we will get round to everyone, but it's like, you think, oh, we've got these, 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 mm. these, and then you get other people asking, oh, I've got this release. Yeah. So they kind of jump the queue because I want them to kind of get in before, you know, it's advertised. And, stuff. and you realise you get one artist a week. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it, but yeah, we will we'll, we'll get on to everyone, don't worry. Absolutely. Uh, if you've got any musicians you want us to get in, please contact us. We will try. Doesn't mean they're going to accept it. We've been trying Jack Black all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, not joking. We've, I've tagged him in TikTok. I've tagged him in Twitter. I've tagged him in Instagram. I sent him an email tonight. Um, so, Jack, if you're listening, episode 20 is coming soon. Even if you just want to be a Zoom call for five minutes, we've got a question about what tribute's really about. Yeah. Uh, let's have a pint. And. Yeah, we're going to listen to you sing Turbulence Time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be on the show. It's been a good crack. Yeah, that's thank you. Oh, that's that's fun, part that. three, side three was one of my side favorites three. so far. Yeah, I think it's been fun. Um, yeah. So yeah, any questions you want guys want to send in, off the stage, uk gmail.com. Uh, slide into James's DMs, if he doesn't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see you on the stage, and then we'll see you on the 24th of November. Okay, if thank you. Before. Brilliant. Thank, thank you. you for coming down. Bye. Oh, yeah, there you go. You, you, right. you get it, you get it yes. right. I, I'm always <laughs> terrible at it. And, uh, that's a wrap. Yeah, let's do it. Right. Get you on the search. Thank you very much. Dun, 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 dun. Yes.
nobody wants to live forever Cause nobody wants to be alone Still you give why you got All this questioning what for You don't pray Cause you know That these turbulent times will come no more Nobody wants to live forever Cause nobody wants to be alone Still you give Why you got Always questioning what for You don't pray Cause you know That these turbulent times Will come no more You don't pray Cause you know That these turbulent times Will come no more